Hey everyone, Mr. Sujano here, your source for gaming, tech, emulation, and open source news. Let's get started. Alright, to kick things off, yes, I am camping again, and yes, it's an absolutely gorgeous evening. I'm assuming this video is going to span over the evening and into tomorrow, but we'll see how things go. And we'll start out by talking about Microsoft and Steam, and this could be massive news if true. Now, it's worth pointing out that this is a rumor, and I want to stress that because rumors like this have popped up quite a bit. And apparently Microsoft is planning on purchasing Valve for $16 billion. Now don't hold your breath on this one and we'll see if it actually goes through. In my opinion, I don't think it's going to happen. And if it did happen, I would argue this would be bad for gaming. But let me know your thoughts about this potential thing in the comments below. Next up, we're talking about Nintendo Switch emulation with Sudachi. And Sudachi just got a brand new update. So at the time of filming, version 1.0.1 is the latest update. It's up on GitHub. And Antique says moving forward, there's not going to be easy to remember versions, but I'm okay with that. This update has some bug fixes as well as makes Paper Mario The Thousand Year Door playable. If you are curious about this one, I'll drop a link to the GitHub in the description below and feel free to check it out. And on a side note here at this point in time, I would argue that Sudachi is the best fork of Yuzu out there. Next up, we're talking about N64 emulation with Simple64. And Simple64 got a small but nice update. So 2024.5.2 is the latest update here and they've updated Parallel RDP to the latest version. Next up, we're still talking about N64 emulation and this time switching to RMG. RMG stands for Subscribe to Mr. Sujano or Rosalie's Mupin GUI. And RMG just got a brand new update. There's a whole bunch of fixes here as well as an update to the Mupin 64 Plus Core. At the time of filming, version 0.6.0 is the latest update. I'll drop a link to it in the description below. It's 100% free and open source. Moving on, and we're still talking about N64 emulation, and this time with Gopher64. And Gopher64 also got a small update here. There's a few bug fixes as well as updating parallel RDP to the latest version, similar to Simple64. So as with Simple64 and RMG, I'll drop a link to Gopher64 in the description below and feel free to check it out. It's 100% free and open source as well. On top of that, as for which one's better, Simple64, RMG, or Gopher64, Maybe check them all out and see what works best for you. Next up, we're talking about Microsoft's new Copilot Plus software, specifically the recall feature. Now, we talked about this one the other day, and I am not a big fan of this thing whatsoever. Anyways, here it turns out it's not near as secure as it's meant to be. On top of that, I would argue it's very susceptible to hacking. So if you are curious about this one, I'll drop a couple of helpful links in the description below and feel free to check them out. Now, in my opinion, I've got no idea why Microsoft even created Recall in the first place. It's a feature that I would argue nobody asked for. I think I said that in my previous video. The only use I can see from this is corporations to track employees. But what do I know? Let me know your thoughts about Recall in the comments below. I see it as a massive privacy risk and security risk. Next up, if you're a fan of 8-Bit Doe and Gillikit, for example, the King Kong controller and Hall Effect joysticks for stuff like the Steam Deck and more, and you use Discord and Gillik giveaways, I've got a link for you. So Acnes has a Discord link. I'll drop a link to it in the description below, and I do recommend checking it out if you use Discord and you like 8-Bit Doe and Gillikit stuff. They have giveaways over there, and there's product information and a whole lot more. And being fully transparent with you, no, this is not an ad. No, I'm not being paid by them. It's just, I like 8-Bit Doe stuff. I like Gillikit stuff. And I like giveaways, so it's kind of a perfect mix. So what started out as a nice evening turned into an okay morning, and now we've got a whole bunch of rain, but that's not going to stop the news. Next up, we're talking about Retroarch on iOS, and Retroarch just got a huge update. So version 1.18.3 brings about voiceover narration. Yes, text-to-speech is now available in Retroarch on iOS, which is a massive accessibility option. And on top of that, there's a whole bunch of fixes. Now, for everybody else not using Retroarch on iOS, they say to expect a mainline release in the near future. But anyways, that is all I've got for you in this one. Straight to the point, all stuff and no fluff. We talked about a bunch today. Let me know your thoughts about absolutely any of it in the comments below. If you like this video, leave a like. If you didn't like this video, leave a like. Hit that subscribe button. Check out my other videos. Don't tempt fate. Save your state.